Welcome to the fifth video on rational asymptotes and something called limit notation. You're going to want to take really good notes on this lesson. You may even want to watch it more than one time. This will be the first time that you have seen this notation and it's very important both for pre-calculus but also next year when you're taking calculus. We're going to introduce the limit notation and we're going to describe the behavior of asymptotes of rational functions using limit notation. Okay, there's a lot going on here. Um, here's a little bit of a review. You can see the rational function over here. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Um, and you can see that this one looks like it might even have a hole in it. Uh, this has an x-intercept here. It also has a y-intercept. And you can see it's in first and third, um, loosely described as quadrants. And so we've talked about the behavior of graphs on the ends, the end behavior. And so, for instance, if I say as x goes to positive infinity, so as x moves this way in the positive infinity direction, you can see that the graph is getting really, really close to the asymptote at y equals 1. So f of x is getting really, really close to 1. And it's getting close to the 1 from above it. All right, as, and so the limit notation says this, the limit as the limit as of f of x of this function as x approaches infinity is 1. So these two things mean the same thing. As x goes to infinity, um, the graph is going trending to 1. All right, so if we go the opposite direction, we go from the center outward in behavior. As x goes to negative infinity, you can see that y is getting really close to the asymptote from underneath it, from the bottom. It's getting still very close to 1. It doesn't actually reach 1 in either case, but it's getting very, very close to it, so that's what it's approaching. So we would say then that the limit as x approaches negative infinity, which is what that should say, x approaches negative infinity, f of x is also equal to 1. So this reads, the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity of f of x is, and in this particular instance, it is 1. All right, so what we're getting used to is this notation. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of my function, whatever my function is, and I could actually substitute the actual function in here, is 1. And this is describing the end behavior or the behavior at the horizontal asymptote. We can use that same strategy to analyze the behavior at the vertical asymptote. So we see the same graph, the vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 2. I mean x equals 2. Alright, so what we're going to look at then is the behavior as x approaches 2, as x gets closer and closer to 2, from the right, what is y doing? Well, y is increasing without bound, so we would say f of x is going to infinity. All right, so what we would say is as x approaches from the right to 2, we would say something like 2 to the plus. That plus up there means it's coming from this direction. 2 to the minus means it's coming from the negative direction towards the vertical asymptote at 2. So here it says the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right is infinity. All right. And at the same vertical asymptote, as x approaches 2 from the left, what is f of x doing? Well, it's decreasing without bound. So as it approaches, here I have to say 2, as x approaches 2 from the left, that was from the right, this is from the left, it is going to negative infinity. So to write it, you would say the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative, from the left, is negative infinity. All right, and here they are in words. Please write this down. That's what this notation means. These mean the same thing. That's what you're looking at. 
It's just that you're writing it with the limit notation. So it says the limit as x approaches 2 plus from the right of f of x is positive infinity. And so I write infinity in here. Once again, the limit as x approaches 2 with the negative sign means from the left of f of x is negative infinity. In other words, it keeps going down. It decreases without bound. So this is used to describe vertical asymptotes with limit notation. So on this screen, this is what we're going to do is we're, instead of writing the words as x approaches whatever, we're going to actually use the limit notation here. So I look down on this one. It says the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. So I look on my graph. Here's 3 right here. 3. And I'm saying, okay, as x is approaching this way, what is the graph doing? Well, it's increasing without bound, so it's positive infinity. All right, so now on this graph, this same graph, I want to know what's happening as x approaches infinity. So I'm approaching infinity. Um, when it was approaching 3 to the x, I was approaching a vertical asymptote, or 3 to the plus. If I'm approaching x to infinity, I'm doing a horizontal asymptote. So I'm looking here and I'm saying, okay, as this is going this direction, this graph is getting really close to zero. So this is a vertical asymptote and this is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, same deal here. As x approaches negative infinity, I'm looking at the behavior of the horizontal asymptote. As x approaches negative 3 from the left, I'm looking at the behavior at one side of the vertical asymptote. So I come over here, I'm looking for negative 3, negative 3 is here, here's my asymptote. And I'm saying as I approach it from the left, what is the graph doing? Well the graph's going to infinity. Right? That's the vertical asymptote. So what is the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right? of f of x. Well, at this particular vertical asymptote, the behavior is going in the opposite direction. So as I approach the vertical um, from the right, um, it is decreasing without bound. So when I write, you know, when we're graphing a vertical asymptote and we do this, that's what we're saying. We're saying as it gets close to that asymptote, it's going in opposite directions. So what would it look like if it were going in the same direction? None of these are going in the same direction, but they would just be, uh, say for instance, I had a graph that looked like that, right? At this asymptote, it's going to infinity, going, it's going to infinity and going to infinity on both sides. This is going to infinity, going to negative infinity. Going to infinity, going to negative infinity. And so that defines what's happening at the vertical asymptote. Now the horizontal asymptote is plus or minus um, in, uh, infinity. So this is going this way. So I'm looking here. Well as x moves to negative infinity the graph is getting really really close to where y is 1. Where y is 1. And so then if I look on the other end down here uh, the limit as x is approaching infinity of f of x, it's also 1. So the two together are describing the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so here's what a typical problem would look like. You have the graph. This time, instead of saying f of x, it says the actual function here. But since it's saying is what is the behavior as x approaches negative infinity, you are trying to look at the behavior on the horizontal asymptote. All right, so I follow along as x goes to negative infinity, y is getting really close to 2. So the limit of this function is 2. All right, so putting this together, um, let's look at what we've done with graphing and then look at the limits after we graph this. So how do we find the vertical asymptotes? Well, we're going to factor the denominator, so I'm going to have x minus 3, x plus 2. The vertical asymptotes are at x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Neither are perfect um, squares, so they go the opposite direction. So I have those written in here. Uh, the horizontal asymptote 
for this is just going to be y equals 4, right? And so I have that also graphed on here. And so we want to draw the graph. So we know that there is a <clears throat> x-intercept at um, 0, 0. And we have opposite behavior at each vertical asymptote. All right, so that's what the graph is, basically. So here when it says, what is the limit as x approaches the vertical asymptote from the left, right? So as it approaches here, it's going to infinity. Um, is it approaching from the right, it goes to negative infinity because it goes to opposite directions. So this is um, vertical asymptotes. These are still, this is the other vertical asymptote at 3. It says from the left, it's going to negative infinity, and from the right, it's going to positive infinity. They go opposite directions. The end behavior of the horizontal asymptote is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of my graph, f of x, is going towards the horizontal asymptote, which is 4. Likewise, the limit as x approaches positive infinity of that function is also 4. Okay, in summary, if you have a horizontal asymptote, as um, you write the limit, you describe the behavior on both ends. So you would describe the behavior as x goes to infinity and x goes to negative infinity, and that would be a number. So this would just be a number, like 4, and it will be the same number because it's the same asymptote. So you need two limit um, equations to describe one horizontal asymptote. Same deal for a vertical asymptote, right? You are looking at the behavior as it comes to the vertical asymptote. So this would be from the vertical asymptote, say it's two from the positive side and two from the negative side, right? So vertical, this is horizontal. All right, so this, these would be numbers. So this would be a number, these would be numbers on a vertical asymptote. It takes two to describe the behavior at one asymptote. So this is going to be plus or minus infinity, plus or minus infinity. All right, so this is the summary and we'll be doing lots of problems like this in class, so I will see you then.